Hello grade sevens, Helen here and that means it's time for your natural sciences lesson. So what are we looking at today? Well, we're going to be looking at the same kind of topic that we've been looking at for the last few lessons, different methods that can be used to separate mixtures. So I want you to look at this revision slide and I want you to tell me if you can recognize all the different processes or methods that we have used so far to separate mixtures. Do you remember that we looked at something called filtration? We also looked at evaporation. We looked at distillation which also involved evaporation, but also condensation. We saw that we could sort objects by hand, we could sieve objects, and we could use the property of magnetism. And in terms of magnetism, we can separate metals from each other, metals that are magnetic from metals that are non-magnetic. So what are we going to learn about today? Well, we're looking at another process to separate mixtures. And this process is called chromatography. Now, when we need to, to work out what chromatography means, we need to understand something about pigments. So pigments are certain chemicals that give color to materials. Now they don't change the nature of the material. It's not a chemical reaction. They simply are mixed into the material and provide that mixture with some kind of color. Now inks and dyes that are used to, to, to print things as well as to dye your clothing, for example. They are mixtures of different pigments to give just the right color to your ink or to your fabric that you've been dyeing. But what if we wanted to separate those pigments from the liquid component of that mixture? we would use the process called chromatography. And if we break that word up, chroma refers to color, and we can see how that relates back to our definition of what a pigment is. And when we talk about a graph or graphy, we're talking about that we're going to be able to see the separation of colors in some kind of diagram or some kind of picture. So you know that we have different pigments. We call some of our pigments primary colors like the blue, the red and the yellow pigments. And when we mix certain pigments together like the blue and the yellow, we're going to get green, for example. And what we're going to look at today is how can we take those mixtures of pigments and separate them out again? The principle behind chromatography is that the particles making up our mixture have different characteristics. Now, some of these characteristics are going to be easy for you to understand. For example, some of the sizes of the particles are going to differ from each other. But other characteristics are going to be how, how they move in terms of electricity. And those ideas are more complicated and We'll get to them when we look at chromatography again when you're in high school. But for today, all that we need to understand is that the substances in our mixture have different characteristics or different properties. We have 
our solution, there's our solution, which is a mixture made up of the solvent and the solute. Now, can you predict what our solute is going to be? The solute is going to be the dye or the pigment itself. The solvent is going to differ depending on the kind of dye or ink that we are making. Now, you may have a, a, a collection of marker pens or cokey pens at home. If you look on the marker pen, it will tell you whether it is a permanent marker or whether it is a non-permanent marker. Now, in non-permanent markers, the solvent is usually water. In permanent markers, the solvent is usually an alcohol. So we're going to focus on a mixture of a water-based pigment. And we're going to see how we can do this even at home. So I hope you're ready for this. So is the black ink in your water-based black marker really black? Or is that black made up of other pigments altogether. What is your hypothesis? Now remember we said this had to be a non-permanent or a water-based marker. You could do the same kind of investigation using a permanent marker, but then your solvent is going to be alcohol, not water. And I think your parents would be far happier knowing that you were doing science investigations using water and not alcohol. So that's the only reason we've chosen a water-based black marker. So what is your hypothesis? Is the dye or the ink in the marker black? And is that black one substance? Or is it made up of many pigments? Now, remember when you put together a hypothesis, you start off with a question and then you get a prediction of what your answer is going to be after the experiment. It doesn't matter if your prediction is incorrect, but you must make a prediction or a hypothesis. So I'm going to make the hypothesis is black ink is made up of many pigments, right? That's my hypothesis. But your hypothesis could have equally been black ink is black pigment, no other colors. It doesn't matter what your hypothesis is, just that you have stated it. Now, we're going to do the chromatography, which is our investigation to see if we can separate pigments in the black ink. Of course, if we can't separate pigments and it's just black ink, then my hypothesis will be overturned or incorrect. But if this is made up, this black ink is made up of other pigments, then my hypothesis will be upheld or it will be correct. Now, this is an investigation that you can do at home and have a lot of fun with. So you're going to take your permanent marker. You're also going to need some filter paper. You can also use, if you don't have coffee filters or proper filter paper, you can simply use roller towel. It works just as well. You're going to need some way of balancing or attaching your filter paper to the flask or beaker or jug that you're going to do the chromatography in. So using simple little clips across a pencil will allow you to clip your piece of paper and attach it to a pencil or a little wooden spoon or something that's going to prop that up because you can't stand and hold it all the time. So those are things that you need to gather before we do the process of chromatography. Now, we're going to place little dots of the ink 
on our starting line. You can do the starting line just with a pencil line if you like because the pencil is uh, made up of carbon so it's a completely different substance. It's, it's not going to get in the way of our chromatography. Now in this picture I simply are showing you black ink in, in little dots. But in this picture here, I've shown that you can have quite a lot of fun. We could put X, which is our black ink that we don't know if this ink is made up of only black pigment or if it's made up of other colors. We've, I've put here a dot of green, a dot of blue cokey pen, uh, some brown marker, some real purple marker, some red marker. So we can put different markers all along the start line, just for fun. But here's our test substance. We're then going to make sure that we allow the filter paper or chromatography paper to rest in our solvent, but the solvent must not touch our little ink drops. You can see that the level of the solvent must be below the level of our ink drops. And because we're using water-based markers, the solvent in this case is water. Now, as we attach or prop up our filter paper, the water is going to start seeping in and moving up the filter paper. And when it hits the pigment as it's being absorbed by the water, by the paper, we're going to see that the pigment starts to move. The solid particles in the pigment start to move up the paper. And we can see here that our black is certainly made up of a little bit of blue as well as some other pigments. And so we start to see that the pigments get dotted up the filter paper depending on their size. Now that's the investigation that you can do with water-based um, markers or cokey pens. You're going to find when you get to high school that you can do chromatography of leaves for example and you can separate the pigments in a leaf or in a flower. When we do chromatography with leaves, what looks like a green pigment actually after chromatography turns out to be chlorophylls, different kinds of chlorophylls, other pigments such as xanthophylls and carotenes which are yellow and orange and we can see that the green leaves we're looking at actually are mixtures of other dyes or pigments as well. How is chromatography important in our everyday lives? Well we can see that here is our result of our black pen marker but this principle could be used in blood analysis, antibody investigation, drug testing, because whatever substance it is that you put on your start line, it's going to move up our filter paper and it's going to stop at a particular place that is based on its uh, particles and on its characteristics. We can use this in the food industry to make sure that we've got no contaminants in our foods. Or if a food company says uh, there's no tartrazine or colorant in our food, if we put a sample of the food and we allow it to undergo chromatography and we get a signature pattern of tartrazine or a particular drug or chemical in the food, we can understand that that food does have that particular substance in it. So any place where materials need to be analyzed, purified, we can do that analysis 
using chromatography. And not all chromatography is done with paper, as you will discover when you go into high school. Other methods of chromatography are also used. But that's it for today. Go and have fun with your water-based cokey pens and see if you can do some chromatography. For today, goodbye. Thank you.